Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, my church family. I greet you in the name and the love and the peace of Jesus Christ. Um, we uh, are continuing in our daily word, and I want to say as we're getting started here, I, I have uh, been asked, uh, are we going to keep doing these? Uh, what's, what's the story going to be on the daily word? Because yesterday we started back in uh, in-person worship, and is this the, the sign that now we're going to stop doing the daily word? And I will just tell you, I, I feel like as long as the Lord has given me a word, I'm going to share it. And so we'll continue until the Lord says, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see when that, when that might be. But thank you so much for those who join us in worship, either online or in person yesterday. We had about, uh, about 200 people here on campus and uh, we're keeping everything very safe, and I think everybody uh, felt that and really felt uh, felt grateful to be back in in the house of the Lord, and that was just a, a real blessing for for me as well. So thank you all, and and again for those who feel like they need to stay home, uh, completely understand. Really believe me, I completely understand. So continue to join us on online and. We'll continue to pray for you and, and continue to miss you, miss seeing you. Uh, so uh, today I wanted to share with you from John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus says, um, this is after the, the death of, of Lazarus and for the, the sake of the glory of God to, to give testimony to Jesus and who he is. Jesus wakes, waits back when he knows that Lazarus is ill Lazarus has passed, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Now, that's a mysterious statement, isn't it? And he says, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? So he says this to Martha, and, and let's just kind of Let's kind of uh, pull this apart just a little bit that he says that they will live, those who believe in Jesus will live even after dying and then says that we won't die. So that might seem at first glance a little bit confusing. So what, what's he actually talking about here? Well, Jesus is talking about the fact that we actually will physically die if we are not physically alive in this world, in this life, when Jesus returns, we, we will physically die. Our bodies will wear out. We will perish. It's going to happen. It, it's going to happen to all of us. We don't like to think about that, but it is. But Jesus tells us here that if we live and believe in Him, that we will never, ever die. And that is in the ultimate sense. Physically, we will pass. But who we are, our, our souls will dwell in the presence of the Lord. We will be alive in Christ Jesus. And, and I, I want to share with you a little, a little bit of an experience from, uh, from college. I was a religion major in college and had this disagreement, this argument with uh, the theology professor. And, and I love the guy. I'm not going to tell you his name because um, I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not trying to speak against him. It's just I think that he was wrong. And and here was the issue. You see, at some point in in the the church, we I think we stop talking as much as we should about the coming kingdom of God. We stop talking about the second coming of Jesus and the renewal of all things. And we put our focus on just going to heaven, right? That that was the goal, to go to heaven. And so the focus was when you die, you go to heaven, end of story. Well, there was some pushback against that, and that's really where this argument came in. There was some pushback where uh, folks in church leadership, uh, theologians and so, uh, some started to push back, but they pushed back in the wrong way. They started to say, no, no. When you die, you're just dead. You're dead, you're asleep, and you, you are not alive again until Jesus returns and you are raised from the dead. Now, uh, clearly, and this was my argument, um, clearly the scriptures indicate 
that that is just not the case. We, we are not just dead when we die in the Lord. We can look at any number of examples. The criminal who is beside Jesus on the cross, who is repentant, who reaches out to Jesus, what does Jesus tell him? Today, you will be with me in paradise, right? Not only that, Paul, think about the Apostle Paul. He actually has this sort of internal argument going on uh, within himself about what's better. Is it better for me to stay here or to depart and be with the Lord? He knows that. John is given this sort of spiritual transport to heaven. And it's from that experience that he records the book of Revelation. He is given a vision of the present activity of heaven. The, the saints are there in glory, and they are praising God. This is present activity in heaven. And so clearly, we are not just dead, not heard of, not thought of, when we die physically. When we die physically, somehow, spiritually, we go to heaven. We go to paradise. We go to dwell with the Lord. But what we need to understand is that there is a further hope beyond that. And that is, at the return of Jesus, on that day, heaven and earth will be one. All things will be made new. Uh, earth, The earth, God's good creation, will be fully restored. The curse of sin will be completely healed. And we will be raised in incorruptible, imperishable bodies that the Lord will give us, in which we will enjoy God's good creation forever. Right? That is the fullness of the hope that we're talking about here. And, and I think that we need to tie these things together because our hope is amazing. And, and we can live in this day-to-day -day confidence to know that even, even after dying, I'm going to live and in a very real way, I will never die because I am in Christ. I will, be, I will be welcomed into the Father's house. And we know not only will we be redeemed, but the entirety of creation will be redeemed. Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. Let us, brothers and sisters, live in that confidence. Amen. Amen. Well, I love you, church family. And until we, we get a chance to speak again, may God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.